in your own work in condensed matter physics, which is obviously not a vacuum, have you applied these techniques, or are they often applied? They are often applied. Um, funnily enough, though, what you very often have, and this brings us back to emergence, is you can redefine the vacuum. Okay. So, for example, in, um, in a solid-state system, you might say that when you have a um, metal, for example, with all of the electrons um, inside the Fermi surface, none of them promoted, you can treat that as the vacuum, and then any excitations become... Um, excited particles out of that vacuum. So it's a, it's a redefinition of the vacuum. And this allows you to apply these, these quantum field theory techniques again. Exactly. How about in like superconductivity? You, you, can, you, can you can do the same thing. So your ground state, whatever the ground state of your system is, you can define as the vacuum. And then think about the excitations out of it. So, I mean, a very good example in the, in the field of, of semiconductors, and uh, again, this brings us back to emergence, um, in a semiconductor at absolute zero, so something like silicon that you make your, your, your silicon chips out of, at absolute zero, all of the electrons will be in the valence band and the conduction band will be completely empty. You can define that as the vacuum. Now then what happens as you warm the system up is that you will promote an electron from the valence band into the conduction band. That will leave a hole in the valence band. So you now have a problem with two types of particles that are excited out of the vacuum. Of course, whenever you make an electron, you make a hole. And the hole is a very odd kind of concept. It's actually an emergent concept um, because there aren't really holes. All there are is absences of electrons. So when a hole moves to the right, it's really an electron moving to the left. But then you look at your glass of beer and you see a bubble rising to the surface. In fact, what you're seeing is, is beer falling. Yeah. But of course, your eye focuses on the bubble yeah. Yeah. because that's the emergent property. Yeah. And again, this comes back to the finiteness of the human mind that we, focus, we prefer problems where we're focusing on the few rather than the many. Yeah. And it's not just the finance of the human mind, it's a more economical description. It's the more economical description, yeah. exactly. The, the, the clearer one, or the, maybe the, more, the, the better one. That's a hard thing to say, but it feels, it feels like a better one. Maybe. Indeed. I mean, if you, were, if you were doing a computer program for a limited system yeah. where you were maybe each, the position of each electron was stored mindlessly, and I use that word advisedly, inside a computer memory, then the computer would probably focus on the many yeah. because it could just iterate them through using simple rules. Yeah. But it's the finiteness of the human mind and its ability to focus on individual things that makes us focus on the whole, makes us focus on the bubble. Right.